Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, writer, life coach, talk radio host. This is episode number 85, Emotional Self-Defense. Or maybe Emotional Defense, but I guess you already know what it's called by now because you saw the words go by at the beginning, right? So, I want to talk to about this because there, there's, first of all, this was a request for a friend of mine and you know who you are, so here it is. I said I'd make this for you. And uh, it's interesting because in the time that I've been doing this sort of work and doing this coaching work and uh, metaphysical work and things like that, I've been called upon many times to help people with so-called psychic self-defense, which is like they're being attacked from outside by like malevol malevolent forces and they need to like defend themselves against it all, like, you know, defense against the dark arts like Harry Potter. And even though it is possible possible to have this happen to you, to consciously be under attack from someone, it is highly improbable that it is happening. Because for the most part, two things. One, the number of people out there that can consciously do this is a very short list. And two, for the most part, people aren't really worried about you. They're hung up in their lives, in their own drama, in their own baggage, in their own unresolved issues, and worried who it is that is psychically attacking them, right? I can kind of count on one hand the number of people that I know for sure were actually being proactively assaulted from outside. For the most part, it's kind of a mix between paranoia and just plain old stress. But... That doesn't mean that the sensation that you're experiencing isn't real, and it also doesn't mean that there's not things that you can do that can kind of help you resolve this somewhat, okay? So that's kind of what I want to share with you here tonight. Now, in general, in general, people are transmitters, two-way transmitters. We're bringing information in, we're putting information out. We're bringing energy in, we're sending energy out, okay? And like I, I just had an experience uh, recently when I was helping somebody who was thought they were being, you know, assaulted by, by you know, th this negative energy from somebody outside. And once I did a little bit of digging, it turns out what, what she was experiencing and of course, let me issue the disclaimer, it is always hard to prove these type of things. I mean, I talk about it like, you know, it's this undeniable reality because that's kind of the world I live in. My life's actually not really that different from Harry Potter, which if you think about it, it's kind of awesome, but I don't talk about it too often because it just sounds crazy when I talk about it. But a lot of things are coincidence, you know, a lot of things it is almost, it's, you can always say, oh, well, it might just be coincidence, it might be this, it might be that, there's a logical explanation, whatever. I'm just telling you the things that I experienced. In this particular case, this person wasn't so much um, being attacked by some, like, you know, conscious negative person, so much uh, this person is actually really beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful girl. And there is a lot of guys that like her. And when she doesn't reciprocate, they become very bitter and very angry. And she's kind of a naturally sensitive person. And so what she was picking up on was their bitterness and their hostility towards her, which wasn't necessarily consciously trying to harm her, but negativity was being put out into the universe towards her. You understand the difference? You know what I mean? Like, I don't mean, you know, somebody who, who's sitting home, you know, with a voodoo doll, poking it, you know, kind of hoping that you're going to get a stomach ache, right? I'm just talking about maybe somebody just is generally negative, again, because of their own issues and trauma and unresolved baggage from the past. And if they have thoughts about you also, then some of that negativity can get attached to their negative thoughts towards you. And it's kind of like they're using the law of attraction in reverse at this point. And yes, it is possible for people to both intentionally and unintentionally manifest bad things for you. That is possible. Like sometimes people are like, oh, well, it won't work if you don't believe it. Well, no, that's not true, actually. Whoever believes it the strongest wins. That's the truth. So if you have a greater belief in your indestructibility than they have in their ability to influence you negatively, you'd be all right. 
But if they have a greater belief in their ability to influence you negatively, then you've got in your ability to be able to withstand it, then yeah, you're going to be in for some pain. Whether or not they meant it on purpose and whether or not they meant it consciously. You understand what I mean? So, the reason why I call this emotional self-defense and not psychic self-defense is this can manifest in a lot of different ways. You know, this doesn't have to be some, you know, mystical, incorporeal thing that you go through, right? This can also just be conversations with people. If there's anybody who's really short, you know, if there's anybody who's, like, really snippy with you, or maybe there's somebody who is negative or who is bitter or who you perceive as negative or bitter. Because it just so happens, this is the time of this filming, uh, this is 85, episode 85 of All About You. I just finished episode 75 of, uh, of the radio show of Rise Up with B. Dave Walters. So I'm pumping out a lot of content these days. And one of the things that I was talking about is the different personality types. You know, there's a visual, auditory, kinesthetic, auditory, digital. So there's seers, healer, seers, hearers, hearers, feelers, and thinkers. You know, I'm... And when you interact with somebody who is different from you, we call them modalities. It's your primary modality. Because all of us can see, all of us can hear, all of us can feel, all of us can think. But we have a primary way that we interface with the world. And when you have somebody whose primary way is fundamentally different than yours, then that's hard. You know, hearers and seers can have difficulties relating. You know, feelers and thinkers can have difficulty relating. Right, So this person that you're perceiving is negative and oppositional and adversarial really might be nothing of the sort. They might just be a different opposite modality of you, an opposite personality type. You follow me? Now, one of the things that I just shared on the radio is if you want to be able to influence people, if you want to be everybody's favorite person, if you want people to like you, then it's actually very simple. All you have to do is be the person that makes everybody else feel better about them. Okay? Always be the first one to say, hey, you know, those are nice shoes. You know, did you get your hair done? That looks great. That's a fantastic color on you. You know, are you losing weight? Wow, that's awesome. Right? And again, I don't mean suck up. I've pointed this out before. I'm not saying suck up. I'm saying things that you actually mean. Say the truth. Take the time to observe another human being to find something worthy of complimenting them on. Because it might be the only nice thing that happens to them today. Okay? And when you are exposed to people consistently, that adds up and starts to engender more and more goodwill. I'm not saying do it so that you can get something in return because that's disingenuous. I'm saying do it because it's the truth and you're putting positive energy out into the world. And the more of a source of positive energy that you are into the world, the harder it is for negative energy to come back on you. you know? That's the thing about the law of attraction. It is a double-edged sword. Okay? You put out good, good comes back. You put out negative, negative comes back. That's why worry and anxiety are pointless. That's also why obsessing over things like thinking you're under some sort of psychic attack actually invites some sort of psychic attack, right? Even if it's you're just attracting other people's negative thoughts and emotions and energy towards you versus attracting people's positive thoughts and energy towards you, right? Because here's the thing. No matter what you do, you're going to have some haters, all right? In fact, the more successful you are, the more haters that you're going to get. You know, Barack Obama's got one or two haters, you know, Oprah Winfrey's got one or two haters. You know, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Bill Gates, one or two haters, right? But they succeed anyway. Because a lot, not only do a lot of people love all of those individuals, but they're rooted in themselves and they're rooted in something beyond themselves, which allows them to do what they do, which is what you have to do. So the very first thing in terms of emotional self-defense, I guess the very first thing is realize it's not personal because it is very rarely personal. And even when it is personal, they're still not mad at you. You know, them as a human being is not mad at you as a human being. They're still operating out of their own baggage and trauma and issues from the past, okay? And they're acting out of that. They're acting out of their own twisted, you know, past. And that is who is a, in, interfacing with you now in the present. You know, their own judgments. Remember, all of us, when we take in information, we all delete, distort, and generalize. All of us. Every human being. It is extremely difficult to see things with clarity. Extremely difficult. It takes a lot of practice to be able to do so. 
So, when you find yourself in one of these situations where you feel like you're emotionally under attack, the first thing you have to do, well, I guess I've now I've said the first thing like three times, right? So I, let me just say the next thing you need to do is give up this idea of being the victim. Just let go of that now, okay? It's really up to you in any given situation. Are you going to be the victim or the victor, right? Are you going to choose to see yourself as a victim or a survivor? And in general, the more that you think somebody has power over you, the more of your power that you are giving away. Okay? People only have what power over you that you give them. Only. Okay? Nobody dominates you or controls you without your permission. Nobody makes you feel unworthy without your permission. Okay? So let go of that idea. Then after that, ask yourself, what's so? This is a power question. What's so? What's actually happening? Okay? What's actually happening? Is this person really being a bitch to you or are you being too sensitive? You know? Are they really saying mean things about you or do you have a misunderstanding? Right? Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, no matter who it is, no matter what the situation is, if I go and ask them their side of the story, their side of the story is a lot different from your side of the story. Right? Right? And so it might seem to you like you're this innocent victim and they're just these big mean people, right? But if I go and talk to them, they're probably going to have a shopping list of things that they perceive that you did to them, okay? So it's a never-ending cycle. And it's a cycle that you can break. You can choose to break it by giving up your resentments and giving up your you know, negative judgments towards not only these people but towards anybody. And this doesn't mean that you're going to be friends with everybody. I'm not friends with everybody. You know, I got a lot of friends, and I think I get along with people pretty well, but I mean, even I can't reach everybody. And this used to bother me until I realized, actually it was a, 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 a quote I, I wrote, wrote, a quote I read somewhere else. Actually it was from Archangel Michael talking to John Dee, who was this like a 16th century um, mystic. And Michael told him, you know, well, updating the language, Michael basically told him, he's like, look, not everybody who listened to Jesus believed. You know, so you don't have to feel bad that not everybody who listens to you believes. When I got it pointed out that I'm like, oh yeah, Jesus couldn't win everybody, so you know, if Big JC can't do it, then <laughs> what am I worried about, right? So you shouldn't be worried about it either. Just do the best that you can and put out positive energy towards people that you come in contact with. Now, I want to give you a couple different techniques that you can use for this. Besides just be nice, like I said a second ago, and just make people feel better about themselves. And don't be surprised when you start doing this if initially people are kind of like, you know, what is it that you want? You know, because unfortunately we've been trained to be suspicious that people being nice to us are being nice for a reason. You know, that there's an angle, that there's a hustle. And so not everybody's going to be able to accept that you're just a nice person. And it might take some time for them to get around to it, and they may never accept it. They might not like you because you're a nice person, especially if they're too caught up in their own unworthiness, which is sad, but happens, okay? Um, but there, there, there's a concept in the, the Hawaiian mystical system of Huna. Like, if you've ever heard of Ho'oponopono, Ho'oponopono is really popular now. Um, that's an aspect of... Uh, Huna, um, Hawaiian mysticism. But one of the things that they teach is that we're all connected through like these energetic connections known as Aka cords. Aka cords. So imagine if it's like a spider web. Like you have a piece of silk stuck to you and another piece of silk stuck to another person. Right? And every single person you've met ever you made one of these Aka connections with. So if you think about all the people that you've interacted with in your life, you got one or two of these attached to you now. Right Now, if it's somebody that you deal with constantly and consistently, have repeated exposure to, then your cord might be pretty thick. You know, if it's somebody that you love or somebody that you hate, you know, that you, it might be massively thick. But if it's somebody that you met at a gas station, you know, in 1972, then it might be thin to almost non-existent. But it does work. It's still there. It is still connected to you. So one of the things that you can do is you can choose to sever these Aka cords. And believe it or not, it actually can be pos it can be positive to separate your aqua cords even from people that you still love and still interact with. Because as we've talked about many times before, your goal is to be committed without being attached. You know? Because when you're stuck to people, then you're stuck to people. 
right? But if you have, if you sever those connections, those energetic connections, then you can stay together because you choose to. And there's a lot more power in that. You're not staying because you have to, you're staying because you choose to. But I'll leave it up to you whether or not you want to sever your Akatai's to people who you truly love or if, you know, just people that might be bringing you down. But here's what you do. The way you do this is you just sort of like relax and close your eyes. Okay? Okay, so I'm just talking through a few things here with this time that we have left. So just kind of relax. Breathe deep. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And feel all of the connections that you have to your fellow human beings. And there's a lot of them. You know, you can see them going every which way out into the universe. Now think about the ones that you don't want anymore. Maybe people who've hurt you, or maybe you only met once, or maybe you just don't want to have a relationship with anymore, or maybe you want to sever them all just so you can be unattached. There's nothing wrong with that. And we're going to get rid of them, but before we do, this is what you're going to do. From inside your heart, feel love start to build up inside of your heart. Feel like a little ball of love just start to glow. Right in the middle of your chest, right in your heart chakra. And feel it start to grow outwards and expand. And feel it just kind of covering you up like a sphere all around you like you're inside this glowing ball of love and if you notice all of those cords have to go through this sphere to get to you all of the ones that you don't want anymore just imagine they're all being cut right at the edge of this bubble of love but you feel love go back along the cord like imagine when you light the fuse on a, on a stick of dynamite. You know how the, the, the fire goes down the fuse? Imagine love going down the fuse, down the aqua cord. And love is burning it up, but love is going to reach that person. You're releasing them with love. You're releasing your connection with love. And feel all the ones you don't want or don't need anymore. Just sort of being snipped away. And from this love, this love place, nothing can hurt you. Nobody's negativity can reach you. If you know the technique that we talked about before for connecting with heaven and earth and with God, this is an excellent time to do it. But if you don't, you can just sit in this love because it's with you all the time and protecting you all the time and anybody that means you harm anybody that bears you ill will anybody that sends negativity towards you it just hits this love and just evaporates it can't reach you and you don't have to bear them any ill will you don't have to get angry back you don't have to pay negative with negative because an eye for an eye just leaves everybody blind. You're just in love, surrounded by love, powered by love. And send that love back out into the world, to everybody you meet, to everybody you see. Okay? Now you can open your eyes now. Hopefully you should be feeling pretty good. And we're about out of time. But that is the number one way of emotional self-defense. Feel love in your heart. Feel love surrounding you. And know that negativity can't penetrate, can't reach you, can't hurt you. And not only that, but send love back to the people who hurt you. And who mean you harm. Because they don't mean it personally. They're just dealing with their own baggage and issues and unresolved trauma. And maybe the love that you show them unconditionally might be the only love they've ever received 
but we're about out of time. So you are great, and I love you. And if you want links to the videos, articles, and everything else, you can find them on my website, which is about.me forward slash B Dave Walters.